As a web designer, you have to get color contrast right. That's the difference in value between foreground and background elements because if the ratio is too low, then text will be difficult to read, the website will be difficult to navigate, and accessibility standards won't be met. On the other hand, not everything needs to be purely black and white. Lower contrast ratios can create a calming effect when used intentionally. So what are these ratios anyway? How do you know what's correct in each scenario? Well, that's what I'm going to explain in this video, showing you some real world examples and my design process without leaving Figma, thanks to a newly released native feature. More contrast means that foreground elements are more distinguishable from the background. Now, how much that needs to be depends on the size of these elements. So if, for example, with large text like we have here, if we just select this text itself and then we go to the fill in Figma and click on the swatch, we can see that now we have this new contrast ratios displayed natively. So it's 1.09 to 1 ratio, which you can see is above this line here that it's create, meaning that it doesn't meet the standards. That's what it tells us with the tooltip as we hover over with this no kind of symbol, like a no entry next to the AA. So if we click on contrast settings here, it tells us it's automatically figured out that this is large text, but we can actually set that to be large text, for example. And then it tells us that the essential standards, the minimum ratio that you want is three to one, but for the highest standards of accessibility, you can go for 4.5 to one. So let's say we've got this on AA essential. All you have to do is click on this AA here where it says contrast standard not met with one left click. And it automatically brings the swatch value down to the line here on the graph to make sure that we're above three to one on or above it, the nearest it can get to here. So you can see how that works with large text. Now, if we click on this small text here and do the same process, you see, obviously we're wanting this sort of tone on tone. We're keeping this sort of mint green all the way through, um, but it's just changing maybe the brightness here, which obviously we can do manually. You can also drag this down to the line and then kind of, you know, play with it along the line where you like it more saturated or less saturated. But let's just bring it back up here again. In fact, let's use the eyedropper and get the background color. And then we'll click on the fill. You can see this is a one-to-one -one ratio because it's the same as the background. It's detected that this is normal text automatically. Fantastic. Let's say we want the highest level of ratio. And then we click on the AAA. And we see now we have that sufficient contrast. Now, if you don't have this tool in Figma, maybe it's not become available to you yet, or maybe even using another software, just search for Color Contrast Checker online. And there's loads of tools where you can drag the swatches around or you can put two hex codes in. And that's just a way of representing the colors. For you don't know, we've got hue, saturation, brightness here. If I double click on this, uh, click once on this and then change that to hex. We can see these numbers and letters here that represent the amount of red, green, and blue in the color. And this is what we use to reproduce colors in the browser on the web. And so that will just tell you whether you're meeting that ratios and help you adjust it. But it's great that we can do this natively in Figma. Now we can click on this graphic as well. So I might just, for example, make this the same as my large text. So I'll just copy the hex code from here on the fill and then make this the same color for my graphic. So that kind of thing is how it works. Now you might be thinking this never happens in the real world or isn't this obvious? Well, not necessarily so. Like this came to mind because I just downloaded this app in the last week and notice that there was some really low contrast ratios here uh, in the app. Uh, for example, here at the bottom, where we have these navigation items now I've really zoomed into them. You, I can read them, but they definitely don't meet standards. Like if we were just to put some text on here, let's just write the word shop. This is, I don't know, it's something, it's a little bit like Roboto, slightly narrow um, sans serif. That's not far off, is it? It's something in that kind of world. So if we just start with that, if we make this this color, we just sample this foreground. 
Now Figma won't recognize the background. You can see the contrast checker there is unavailable uh, because it's just a graphic in the background. It has to have um, something with a value on that it, it can recognize and read. So if we just say put a rectangle behind this and I'm going to make this this background color by sampling it. And now um, what we can do is click on the shop and click on the swatch fill there. And then now we have these options you see, even if we just want to do the essential contrast, we can click on this button and it will take it down there. And this is where it thinks it, it should, should sit. I mean, it's not going to meet it over here as well. I wouldn't have thought this is very low contrast. So this is going to be, I have to be a lot closer to Y. If you're using uh, small, all caps, uh, handwritten style lettering, even more so because it's going to be even less legible. So it really depends on the context. So finally, let's look at this on a real live website. I've just brought this football club's website in here using the HTML to Figma plugin just so we can mess around with it. So I've had to change some of the fonts on this first version of it. So it's, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough. And the first thing to notice is the layout actually works. And if your layout doesn't work in black and white, it's not going to work in color. So that's always a useful thing. If you, if you're struggling and you've got a lot of colors going on, you think what's not quite working here, get the structure right in black and white. Uh, and then uh, go back and um, have a look at it, and then add your colors in. So something like this, this could even work. It's actually pretty cool with black and white, and it really helps like the colors pop out uh, from the photographer, you know, and the badge. But let's say we want to apply the branding all the way through uh, the site. A common thing people might do is say, okay, they have these red and blue shirts with these particular shades of red and blue that are visible, you know, these stripes on the crest here. So let's take these from the shield and apply these to the website. That would be a common sort of process on a web design. So if we were to begin to do this here and add some color, we might begin to select, you know, different parts of this, you know, navigation and say, you know, let's just add, you know, color to some of these backgrounds or whatever. And, you know, start to make sure that this was red and blue sort of all, all the way through instead of, you know, kind of all these masses of, of white that we've got everywhere and, you know, bringing the brand in. This is the kind of thing people do. The problem is sometimes they end up with something like this where they say, well, what have I done wrong? You know, we've got an established brand identity already maybe a brand designer has chosen some colors and they might have even done a good job with that but when the web designers come to apply them to the website you end up with this sort of uh, mess and if we look at this text now we can see that this is not going to meet accessibility standards whatsoever we've got a 1.2 to 1 sort of uh, ratio here and because this is a normal text here and you definitely want this to be legible. You're going to have to basically make this text white to um, make sure that it stands out on this sort of blue background. And even so, this sort of mid blue is not really a great color for uh, a background. If we just have a look at it here, you can see the brightness is at 58. And really, that, that's too much in the middle. It's neither light nor dark. And that's not going to be a good background color for longer portions of text. So this is what you have to watch out for not doing, even though now we've clicked a button and it says the contrast ratio is okay. Uh, be careful of these sorts of mistakes. Just looking at a screenshot of the actual uh, website now with the correct fonts and everything in, you can see the choices that the designers have made. So they've actually gone for much darker blues in this top uh, navigation here in this bar here where it's got the actual statistics for the player they have gone for a really deep navy blue so not saying we have to strictly just sample our official blue color but they have tints and shades of that color and that's a good thing to do as well if you have a brand identity just build out those tints and shades so you can have lighter and darker versions of the brand colors 
then they're going to work with really good contrast. So this becomes like an off black background with the off white text. And then here we have this like off white uh, background or almost white, and then this kind of navy blue for the text. So that's very sensible. And then it allows us to have a little bit of hierarchy in the top navigation here, where we've got white text on the deep blue background, where it says first team, club, etc. And then over on the right side, where we've got tickets and shop, that can be a little bit of a recessive navigation. So we're bringing in a bit of hierarchy there by using less color contrast because of yellow on blue versus white on blue. And that makes that slightly recessive. So color contrast can be a great way to bring in a hierarchy and uh, all those kind of things. And there's just a sensible use here of tints and shades to make this website work. When it comes to color contrast, the key is to prioritize legibility, make text easy to read and icons clear. Accessibility means ensuring everyone can use your website easily. But there's definitely some flexibility when it comes to imagery and graphics, depending on the situation. Until next time, happy designing.